Can Orzhov Cleric still make it in today's meta? Let's find out. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys have had a fantastic weekend. Welcome back. It's Monday. I know Mondays are a bit slow, a bit sad. Uh, you got to get back to work, all the not fun stuff, but it's okay because today we're hanging out and we're playing some Orzhov Clerics. This is my version of the deck. There's a lot of different ways you can build this, uh, but I'm testing out a couple of things. Before we jump in, I just want to remind you, if I sound a little bit sick, it's because I am. I'm still kind of getting over stuff, but I'm pre-recording so I can get stuff out for you guys. Uh, additionally, today, today is the day where we bring Country Fried into the It Resolves family, uh, as well as the entire Country Club. So I just want to say at the beginning of today's video, um, if you don't know what's going on with all this, please go watch the Glorious Sunrise podcast, uh, the, the episode that dropped today. Uh, very important that you watch that. We go into detail about what's going on and how this is going to work. But to sum it up, uh, essentially Country Fried was kind enough to agree uh, to become the main streamer on the It Resolves channel. So he is basically giving up his Country Fried channel, keeping his name, but uh, coming under the It Resolves umbrella as our streamer. Now, what that means for the It Resolves community is that we are going to get, in addition to our normal recorded content, which I will still be managing, he will be handling the live stream aspect, which is going to be happening uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. I believe, uh, I, I don't want to say times, but it's in the evening uh, central time for him. He did add all of that information to our content schedule, uh, which you can look at on our website at itresolvesmtg.com. Uh, and so please do check that out. You'll get notified for the live stream, of course, in Discord. So please do keep that in mind. Uh, but today is a huge day for us, guys. So please show up to that live stream. Welcome him to the It Resolves family. Welcome the Country Club, uh, which is his group of followers to the It Resolves community. I know a lot of them have already joined in Discord. So thank you guys so much for being here. It's a pleasure to have you. We're very fortunate to have you guys here. And the hope is that this is really going to grow the channel. Uh, and really going to push us in a brand new community driven direction. And so I'm very excited for this. Country Fried's a great individual. Go hang out with him. Go support. Uh, all that aside, let's talk about today's deck, guys. This is Orzov Clerics. So uh, again, as I mentioned, there's a couple of different ways you can build this deck. Uh, but I went for a very light black splash. Uh, really, all I'm doing is splashing black for the Cleric as well uh, of Life's Blood, as well as Aura, Skyclave, Herophant. Uh, both of which are very good, uh, in my opinion, but uh, and very necessary, but most of the deck is focused on white cards for very good reasons. We've got quite a few that really fit the bill here. So uh, obviously we've got some little life gain enablers, Lunark Veteran as well as Traveling Minister here. Uh, cleric class is here to to, bo to to bolster that life gain and hopefully bolster the board as well with that level two. If something is in our graveyard, we can get it to level three later on and pull something back. Ideally, something like a Righteous Valkyrie. Uh, it's just anything uh, because um, target creature from our graveyard to the battlefield. So it's basically anything we want. Uh, Aura would also be quite good. Uh, for a little bit of removal, we do have Circle of Confinement here. Uh, I find that this is really good, especially against things with Blitz, uh, because they can't bring it back. So uh, I found this to be really helpful. Lunark Veteran is going to throw some counters around, which is great because we also have Voice of the Blessed, which again, as it gets counters and as we gain life and it gets more and more counters, just gets that much more difficult to deal with. Uh, Cleric of Life's Blood going to gain us some life and get some counters as well, which is great. Righteous Valkyrie, of course, is going to gain us a lot of life and then hopefully bolster the board as well. Uh, we do have Inspiring Overseer as a two of. Couple cards in here I'm testing out. This is one of them. Uh, being able to just draw a card for dropping a creature seems pretty relevant. And the fact that it is a cleric and it's a flyer, it just seems good enough to play in the deck. Uh, and so it may not be, I don't know, but so far in testing, it's actually been quite good. Speaking of really good cards, I'm trying out Halo Fountain as well. Uh, this has, uh, I kind of underestimated this card. Uh, the fact that you can untap things like in the middle of combat uh, to draw a card or create a creature or whatever seems really, really good. It does have a you win the game clause as well, which I really doubt we'll get to, but it is an actual interesting thing to, to consider, especially when you are creating one ones uh, off of that first ability. So this is a one of because I am testing it. It's not something that I'm expecting to, to want every single uh, game. But it is quite good, uh, at least in testing, I've found. 
Uh, Sigarda Splendor is here because, again, it gains us some life for every white spell that we cast, which is in our, our entire deck. Uh, but it also draws us extra cards, which is very, very useful in this deck. Uh, the Wandering Emperor I have as a one of here, again, kind of a card I'm testing in the deck. Uh, obviously, we've had this for a little while now with Kamigawa, but uh, a little bit of removal, but it also does create more uh, creature tokens if we so choose, which does help with that wing clause on the Halo Fountain. Uh, so we'll see. It may not amount to, to much, but I think it's pretty relevant. Uh, and then, of course, Aura here, bringing back stuff. If anything dies, we're able to get stuff back. It just adds that recursive element, uh, which is really, really big. So very important. Uh, in the land slot, obviously focused heavily in white. We do have three of the Seed of the Empire. Again, just providing us with a removal aspect if needed. Uh, Cave of the Frost Dragon is here as a one of, just in case we want to get in for, for some attacks later on. Gives us an out against sweepers as well. So this is my version of the deck. Again, I've been playing around with the numbers here just a little bit to see where I can land on everything. So this is very much in progress, but I do encourage you guys to check this out. Maybe try a different version of the list and see what kinds of suggestions you might have. Uh, but overall, I do like this one. We've been doing okay with it and testing. So we're going to jump into some games here today, see how things go. And again, we'll talk more about the uh, country fried uh, streaming kind of stuff here as we're going through. So let's jump into game one right now. All right, guys. And here we are for game number one. Do we feel okay about keeping this? We do have the black source here for the cleric. Uh, if we get another land, we're really well set up. So I'm going to take this uh, and, and kind of hope for a little bit of a good lucky draw. That's not bad, actually. Uh, being able to get this down turn one is usually very helpful, so I'm all too happy to get this down. Uh, guys, like I said, I did want to talk a little bit more about this uh, this merger or whatever you want to call it here uh, with the, the Country Fried channel. This has been a long time coming. Um, so if you don't know, I'm going to kind of summarize this a little bit as best I can. Again, go watch the podcast episode because we go into detail about it. Um, but the idea was really to consolidate what we're already doing into one name um, because there really isn't a good reason for why we haven't done that. Um, so we've been working hard to make that, that a possibility. And it finally is. Uh, we we started working with the It Is What It Is series. That was a really fun little jank series that we did uh, that we had a blast with. I mean, it was an absolute blast. Uh, but it was definitely a... Um, oh, man. Uh, but it was definitely like a mini series. So we knew that there was going to be an end date to it. We do expect a season two for it at some point. But that was more of like a, okay, we know this is going to end. We just want to have some fun with it. <clears throat> um, but we did all that. And in the midst of that is where the Glorious uh, Sunrise podcast kind of spawned because we were thinking, oh, we need to, you know, try some new stuff, do something a little bit different. And that's where that kind of popped up. And so uh, it turned into something that we expected to do more long term. Um, now, in that process, when we were just a couple weeks in, I messaged him. I was like, hey, man, like just out of curiosity. Wow, they have got all the removal. Just out of curiosity, like, would you feel comfortable becoming a part of It Resolves on a permanent basis? Now, I will say, I frame this as you don't have to give up the Country Fried channel. I didn't want him to feel pressured into doing that. I felt it was really important that, you know, he keep what he worked hard to do uh, or create. And so I didn't feel it was necessary to be like, well, you have to ditch that channel completely. Uh, what I felt was important is that we you know, work together and, and find a way to, to make it work in a way that made sense for both of us. Uh, and so he, I think afterwards kind of basically said like, no, you know what? I think it makes the most sense for us to just move forward with it, you know, as, as it resolves and let that country fried channel go. Now he wants again to keep the name, which is fine by me. Um, and so we talked a lot about the details about this. This has been, like I said, a huge, huge work in progress. This has not been an overnight thing at all. Um, and so it took us a while to get there, but we finally did. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a really interesting time because we've worked so hard for this and it's finally here. Uh, and so we're very, very excited for this. It's a great possibility for us. It's a great opportunity for everybody, in my opinion. Uh, I think we're dead here. I think they just have a better Angels deck than we do. That's that's like the easiest comparison, by the way, is the Angels list. And uh, yeah, this is a good one. So, um, but anyway, uh, yeah. So 
we kind of discussed things and figured stuff out but it basically led to yeah he's he's gonna be a part of this full time and uh we're so excited for it dude it's uh it's so so sick that this is a possibility that we get to enjoy and um he he is going to be doing full-time streaming for it resolves now so man they just have all the removal uh so yeah guys i want everybody at it resolves who has been here for a long time i want to encourage you to um really be supportive of country fried as he does start streaming because uh it's it's a pleasure to have him it's a it's a fortunate thing for us as a community to be able to have somebody else here to help uh, because I can only do so much. Uh, as some of you guys probably know, uh, in fact, I know some of you guys know, I have literally uh, been doing everything for It Resolves for the last couple of years. <laughs> um, and it wears on you. I, I mean, I'm working a full-time job and doing this, so please keep that in mind that like I only have so many hours in the day. I'm going to go ahead and concede here. Uh, and so it's tough to do, but it, it's helpful to have somebody here that can actually handle the streaming. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, let's jump into a game too. We'll continue. What's up guys. Before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for the next game and yeah, we'll try this. Um, as we're jumping into this one, I just want to say and encourage everybody, if uh, if you do have, you know, questions or thoughts about all this, feel free to share them. Uh, I know this is a big change for everybody, and so it is something to consider, but I think it's very much a worthwhile endeavor for us to, to jump into this and hopefully hopefully really get some, some positive stuff going, because I think there's a lot of positives that can come out of this. So uh, definitely encourage everybody, ask questions if you have any. Uh, but again, I think this is going to be a huge positive for everybody involved. All right. Uh, yeah, you got it. That's annoying for sure. Uh, I will 100% take this. Uh, that seemed like a weird attack, but that's cool with me. Um, uh, nah, I think we just righteous Valkyrie. They probably will have a removal spell. <laughs> Uh, another brutal Cathar would be brutal. There it is. Um, but I think this is fine. Mono white is the, uh, the the move here, which is interesting. Okay. So they don't have a good attack this turn, at least, which is helpful. Um. I think we gain more life going this way. So I'm gonna righteous Valkyrie gains us a little bit of life, and then I'm gonna Lunark Veteran. Uh, which does get us to a very comfy life total, and I'll get in for some damage here. Uh, the only trick is, again, if they just have some exile effects, which I'm sure they do, um, it's certainly scary, but... Yeah, that's great. Uh, I mean, again, they don't have... This seems like a bad attack, but that's fine. Um, I think we do want to kill the, the Thalia... Uh, just because we do have non-creature spells in the deck, but, um, that's all fine. I don't particularly care that they did all that. Um, alright, sick. So now, let's just go ahead and set up the aura. Um, again, we're in a very comfy life total, and I think we just win. <laughs> Uh, that was a really efficient game. That's exactly what we want from this deck. And so that was beautiful. Uh, let's jump into a game three. All right, guys, here we are for game three. Uh, do we like this? We don't have a black source for the cleric, but we do have for the voice. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. If we get any other land, we're in great shape because we've got um, some really good three drops here. And again, I do want to test out the Halo Fountain. So we'll, we'll see if we can get that going. This might be a tough matchup because it is going to be a... Ooh, that's not good. Um, it is going to be a, uh, a stompy deck on the opponent's side. Um, not going to attack with the veteran. We're just going to let it sit. Uh, one last thing I do want to mention, too, about this whole, like, merger, however you want to describe it. Um, oh, nice. Uh, hmm. Interesting. It's not a land, which is annoying. Uh, but it does allow us to... I think we just take this. 
Um, and I'll get in for an attack here. I'm okay with this. Um, one last thing I do want to mention about this, and then we'll kind of jump off of the uh, the channel topic. But uh, this is a partnership. So this is 100% like a something that he is a, of ownership in uh, when it comes to the live streams and that kind of stuff. So please don't think of this as like it, there's there's not a chain of like i'm the boss and he's underneath or anything like that that's not what's going on uh he is officially part of it resolves on a partnership level uh and so what that means is he has full rights to what he's doing in terms of the live stream um now it resolves is definitely like uh, my thing if that makes sense i mean i started it with uh my good friend will which i've talked about before um unfortunately will just can't be a part of it due to life stuff and that's perfectly fine uh, i'll i'll forever understand his position because he's just a good friend of mine but um this is definitely an area where uh we we are sharing the ownership of the channel as best we can so do keep that in mind this is not just like a a complete ownership situation uh what do we do we needed to get this down, I think. So I'm gonna just not attack. I think we kind of don't want to lose the voice of the blessed because this is now a target for them, more so than potentially the righteous Valkyrie, which truthfully the Valkyrie is the long-term game plan. So that's kind of what I want to keep on the field here. Um, but if they do kill the righteous Valkyrie, then we do have the voice of the blessed still on the field, which does get pretty big very quickly. So. At the very least, we're stemming the bleeding. I mean, we're only at 19 here. So, like, we've only, in the grand scheme of things, lost a life. Which is pretty good, considering we're on, what, turn 5-ish of all this. Um, curious to see if they are willing to, uh, to trade some stuff here. Looks like they're going to fight off. Yeah. Okay. That's very good. Um, yep. So do we kill the chariot? Um, no, I actually don't think we do. I'm just gonna let it, let it all through. It's a big hit, I know, um, but we are a life gain deck, and they're tapped out for the the turn here. So, all right, let's do this. We're gonna just bolster up this voice as best we can. That's really our only hope at this point. Uh, do this. Um, sick. So now at the very least, this does have flying and vigilance, so we can get for a free attack, uh, which is great. And we are back up to 15 life, so we've got a little bit of wiggle room now. Even if they do have another inscription, they can't fight this off easily, uh, so that's really helpful. It looks like they don't have a way to fight it off, so that's great. Um, I would still really love a land. Land would be super helpful right now i'm curious if they plan to attack in looks like they are uh okay sick this is not hmm. so this has trample so how much are we taking four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so we could technically live uh but obviously that doesn't seem great so Yeah, I'm kind of okay with this. Uh, we get to replay these, so, like, that's all fine. Um, it's not great, but it's fine. All right, land is very good. Uh, we're a little behind schedule here, for sure. I think I just played this. I'm not really sure. We're kind of at a big loss right now, because I think we just lose. Um... I wish we could gain some more life this turn. They just went so wide so quickly that I just don't think we've got a, an out here. Uh, killing the Asika's Chariot was definitely the right call, but we're just so far behind at this point. Trying to think if there's a way we can block to gain enough life. All right, so we killed that. Um...
I mean, I think we're just dead. I don't think there's a, a solution here. Let's do that. Yeah, I think it doesn't matter how we do this, but that's okay. <laughs> we gained four out of that. Uh, we got close. That's okay, though. Uh, you know what? We have time for a fourth game, though. Let's jump into a fourth one. Let's see if we can even it up. All right, guys. Here we are for our last game. Uh, again, let's see if we can do this. I actually really like this hand as well, so I'm super cool with that. Uh, let's go ahead and play the clearing class. Pretty easy start. I'm also ordering breakfast because it's super early and I'm hungry. So sorry if I'm looking down, but I'm literally just door dashing food. Um, all right. All right. Looks like the enchantments deck, which is probably going to be super annoying. Um, I'm going to Luminarch Aspirant first. I'm not really sure if this is correct, but I think it just helps us later on with the voice of the blessed. So kind of intrigued. Uh, we do have the Halo Fountain as well. We didn't really get to see it do its thing last game just because of the, the land situation that we ran into. So kind of unfortunate there, but we'll uh, we'll see what we can do this time. I think we just let the two damage in. I'm not going not gonna to stress about that. Another Luminar Caster. Interesting. Um, I think we go for the Inspiring Overseer here. We kind of need another land, so I think drawing cards is pretty important here. And I'll just throw a, a counter here. Um, they're not going to block. I don't think they're going to block. If they do, it's great for us. So I'm going to call their bluff. I don't think they're going to do it. Uh, we're basically giving them the decision. Okay, sick. They are willing to do it. I'm cool with that. Uh, honestly, my thing is this cheapens up so much of their deck that it makes everything so good. Um, like here, yeah, they get rid of an Inspiring Overseer, but this is their entire turn. We've got a lot more, much stronger plays coming in the future. Uh, so I'm super cool with that. Um, hmm. All right, I think we're going to double up on some creatures this turn and then next turn plan to play the uh, Sigarda Splendor. Let's get the counters rolling on the Voice of the Blessed here. I think that's probably for the best. Um, They do get an attack in here, I'm sure, which is like fine. I don't really care. Again, we're life gains, so eventually we just outpace that damage. Yep. Ooh, uh, not bad. Hmm. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Uh. So we counter here. Let's do this. All right. Uh, let's play veteran. Let's play Halo Fountain. Let's go this route. Let's just see what we can do here. Again, I'm not sure that this is the right play. Um, but it does give us an out for life gain. So what I mean by that is with the Lunark veteran, we can create the one ones here, which do now gain us life. So there's a benefit to doing it this way. They also were always going to be able to have an enchantment here. So like, there's no way we didn't get the attack in, um, cause we weren't going to block this. So we're just going to take that. Out. It's a lot of damage I know, but it's fine. All right. Uh, let's, so we can do this, uh, let's put the counter here, let's get the attack in, all right, so here's where we get to do some semi-fun stuff, uh, let's do this pre-con, or pre-damage, so that way we get an extra point in, and we also get flying. All right, so this is where this gets really, really good. Uh, we did also need to, this now has vigilance. So like we kind of had to had to do this in the right order. Uh, this is getting scary though, because we are going to take, I think a good bit of damage this turn uh, at the very least from the Kami. Uh, so the question becomes, do we want to block that? Um, do we have to block it? It has trample. I'm gonna not block. 
I'm gonna just take it. I'm not sure that that's the right play at all, uh, but here we are. Uh, I wish we could do a little bit of both here, but we just can't. So let's get this in. Again, just gaining us as much life as possible. Um, it's gonna bolster these guys up. Let's throw a counter here. We do get the attack in for nine. Which is pretty reasonable. We could have force blocked here, but we don't need to. This gets to transform. This is a weirdly closed game. Um, I'm not sure if we just lose or not, though. I have no clue. <laughs> Wow, they had a borrowed time. Well, that sucks. That's a good game right there. Uh, yeah. So they just get to borrow time the voice of the blessed, and we're dead. That sucks, man. They just had the removal spell. I was hoping for a circle of confinement that we could hit with the, the Kami with, because that would be amazing, but they just have us. Unfortunately, we only got one win, guys. That wasn't so great. Let's talk about this. All right, so Orisov Clerics with a couple of small minor updates, things like that. Uh, overall, not so great. Um, I think Orisov Clerics in general, though, kind of fell off with, uh, especially with Kamigawa. Um, there's a lot of ways to deal with it. Uh, and despite the recursion aspect with Aura, I think if you're going that route, you really have to go full-fledged into it. Uh, we were kind of light on lands for a game, so that definitely impacted one of those. But all in all, I just don't think the deck is quite as good as I was hoping. Uh, I do really like the Halo Fountain. We did kind of get to see it in that last game. Uh, just kind of work its magic in terms of um, the instant speed ability to create one ones, the uh, potential card draw aspect off of it, and then the actual like win the game clause is just sick if we can do it. So it wasn't great, but it was fun. Uh, and so at the very least, I hope that you guys enjoyed it, uh, despite seeing me lose constantly. Uh, maybe Country Fried will take this deck list later on and uh, hang out with it on stream and see if he can make it better. We'll see. Uh, but guys, I do encourage you again, please, please go hang out with him as he is starting to stream on the channel. Uh, let's be as supportive as possible of the newcomers here uh, because we do really appreciate all of them being here. This is a, a merger of two really great communities and so hopefully one much much more uh, positive community, I think, is the idea here. So uh, let's be really positive. Let's be really supportive. And let's go hang out with Country Fried, guys. It's going to be a great time. Thank you guys again for watching. I do appreciate it. Thank you for all the support recently. I'll see you guys later.